Nate is backing the trailer up over here to put the tin from his tractor that is going to go uh, to get sandblasted before he paints it. Um, guy is in Kadat. And it just so happens we have to go pick up a horse in Kadat. So we're going to load it up here in the trailer, drop the tin off, and then pick up a medium pony, we are told. Yeah, go ahead and clean that one. Yeah. I need to rearrange my face. <laughs> back with the hay bun. What's going on now? This is just maintenance, not really fixing. The knives, last time I cut hay, it didn't cut very good because the knives are getting dull. You can see, no, I think you can see how dull that is. They're reversible, so you got to take it out, flip it over. Ernie. You can't see very good with them in there. This is what they're getting to look like. And that's what you want, a nice sharp edge. Oh. And fortunately, fortunately, um, our neighbors that are real farmers stopped by. And uh, I was re a couple of them were bent, so I had to re replace them instead of just flipping them. And these knives I got. They're smaller. Or, the, this is one of the new ones I got. This is the, what belongs on here. Oh, they're too big. It's, it's longer, and I would have thought much of it, but they said, well, you got to make sure if you put one on a turtle, you put both on because the difference in weight will make it vibrate and possibly self-destruct. Because these things spin. When you're cutting, the turtles spin it. I tried to find on the internet exactly how fast, but... Five, oh, they're really fast. Five or six thousand RPM. Maybe somebody watching the video will say, you want to know exactly how fast they spin. Maybe it's 10,000 RPM. I don't know. They spin really fast. So if you have an out of balance, obviously it'll vibrate and wreck stuff. So it's good that the real, <coughs> real farmers stop by. So you got to make sure they're the right they have arrows on them and each every other turtle spins opposite so you have to have make sure the arrows point the right way look how bad this one is i'm gonna keep moving it So it should work much better now. This is broke too. You so want to replace it? We have oh. spare parts. Gives you a different hammer for these.
the bolts are the problem. Oh, this thing back here holds it in too long. Bernie's learning how to fix the hay bind also. he gets another socket thing or whatever I'm gonna show you one thing they were working on this week this is a side of the shop you've maybe seen it in previous videos tires and like all kinds of stuff piled up and he's got a really old truck he wants to fix up that's been sitting here for oh, I would say since 2009 10 um, got this all cleared out of course he parked stuff here right away but he's gonna make a big lean to off of here to keep like the skid steer and tractors and stuff under, keep them covered. So that'd be really nice. And then the side of the shop won't be such a mess. Uh, tore down some fence line to do so, which we want to replace this anyway, um, as part of the run that will run all the way across. And then over here, at the same time we do that, we're gonna put a lean-to off the back of the quarantine barn, like right. Yeah, that ain't gonna work like right there um because usually we would just leave the gate open and the horses could go in there for shelter but if we have a horse in there and right now everything is kind of torn apart um that's a video from a long time ago a uh, little miscommunication and we no longer have real stalls in there um, but we're getting ready to start revamping the quarantine barn too um so we'll kind of start with that and then the quarantine horses won't have to go in the barn um, you know, just for shade and whatnot, and we'll have a nice little section to hang out in back here. Come with comfy, Bernie. I'm okay, getting so big. So big. No go? No, the bolts are too rounded off. And while he looks for yet another tool, if you remember in last week's video, there was all kinds of noise in the background when Kylie was working with Shiloh and Falcon, and um, well, that was Doug over here scraping up the driveway. Uh, Nate wanted to add on to the apron. Here because we'd always have water sitting at the end of the old concrete so we added on this little section I don't know if you can see it but it kind of concaves can you see that so as water comes down and from the shop it'll kind of pull right here and then run off this direction which the dugout as well and that pile of rocks right there We'll go into that to keep it from turning into a sloppy muddy mess. This will make it much nicer um, in this area here for when we need to back up and unload horses in quarantine from the auctions. Because this gets, if you look at some, <clears throat> if you look at some previous videos, you can see it's been kind of a tough go to get into here sometimes. Uh, so this will make it much nicer. Um, for the shop and and for the horses. You'll be very surprised to see who's over here supervising. And she also very kindly left some prints in the concrete. Doug was not happy with her. 
Not sure if you can see them. They're not bad. If you can see them. I wasn't quite ready for her to walk on it yet. So, Midge left her mark. She had to take a look at the work they'd done. What's going on now? Well, when I cut off, I thought it was a bolt and a nut, but it turns out the nut is welded to the machine. So now I have to get, remove what's left of the bolt and get new bolts to put in there. Another trip to town? Uh, possibly. I gotta get something neat anyway. <laughs> oh, I'm sure some of you will say you shouldn't be underneath this thing with it just held up by the hydraulic. But I think the machine might say that itself. It's got transport locks here. Oh, oh it can't come down. Can't? Cannot. That holds it up. That's oh. it. Good to know. Safety first. You need your glasses? No, I'm good. that off already? Yeah, half done. Just like I was saying, uh, as far as revamping the quarantine barn, it is currently empty. But if anyone remembers, these stalls got completely dismantled all around, which was not the plan. It was just supposed to be these two. Um, so we're kind of you know, getting by, but what we're really waiting for, like we're ready to like put everything back together and get actual stalls and everything like that and get the scale into the chute, but we need concrete in here. And well, there was a guy who was supposed to come out last July or August to take a look, give us an estimate, tell us what we need to do. Um, he has yet to come out. Um, so Doug and Ross, one of Nate's customers who does uh, concrete and who just did that pad I was showing you out front there, um, they've already come in here. They're going to take a look and we're going to get this going. So this won't be such a absolute disaster because this is not okay. But yeah, empty in here right now. There's Oreo. Hey, Oreo. And also, for anyone wondering, Garfield is still around. There's his food and water. Yes, we do feed the cat. Um, he does some good mousing around here, so we're going to give him some food for sure. He's just not in here at the moment. He might be maybe in there sleeping somewhere, but typically if he's in here and I come out, he comes out to say hello. So, And then he's out hunting or just taking a nap somewhere in the shade. And Hi, buddy. This is Oreo. He's the old... Old man donkey. Um, what's awesome about him, he's way too old for us to castrate. It'll be extremely hard on him and not fair to him. Um, but we actually found him a home where he will be able to keep, um, well, he'll be able to stay a jack um, and not worry about getting um, anyone bred and live out his days there. Sadly, the only other option um, would have been to put him down as we do not adopt them out intact. We don't want them um, obviously breeding, but this place does not have any animals he could breed with. And uh, it'll, it'll be good for him. And it makes me happy. It really would have sucked that we had to put him down just because of that. 
you know, it's extremely hard on um, the older guys to castrate and it's even harder on donkeys in general. They tend to bleed a lot more than horses and the stress it would have put on him just, I, he doesn't deserve that. So it's a good outcome for him, which makes us very happy. So not to change the subject, but the home that we have lined up for old man Jack Donkey out there, Oreo, um, what kind of animals will he be protecting? Uh, they have uh, beef, uh, beef cattle. Beef so cattle? Steers. And they've been having trouble with predators, getting them running, and then they run them through the fence, and then they're in the neighbor's cornfield, they're on the road, and it's really kind of a pain for them, so. Yeah. So this way he gets to keep his nuts and have a home and have a job and have a job which donkeys love anyone can argue that mini donkeys not so much but a donkey like oreo and figwet will be going with him as well and that is his number one job he loves doing he is all about protecting his herd so good news all around oh you already put the new one on yeah, I just gotta, I think I got the bolt, right bolts here. This is a, it's a New Holland machine, which, but I think it was actually made by Kuhn and they're a European manufacturer. So all the bolts are metric. If it was actually made by New Holland, I think everything would be standard. And I have, I just don't have a lot of metric bolts around here. Oh. You know, the United States is one of the only places in the world that doesn't use the metric system. Well, we do, but not. Not. It's not their primary right. uh, method. We're kind of backwards that way, I guess. Yeah. Well, I could be. Well, they call it bass backwards. Bass backwards, yeah. And I could be wrong about that, but I just read on the internet, so it has to be true that this machine was made by Kuhn. Like, how do you spell that? K U H N. K U H N. Okay. So Nate's got the hay buying back together and he just told me he's going to head up and start cutting hay today. Uh, so we're beginning um, our second crop right now, July 1st, and it's hot. It's awfully hot, isn't it, Midge? Yeah, I know. Don't worry, I got the AC on. We'll get going. She's got to supervise. It's a little cleaner now after we got some rain, huh? It's a quarantine. So I don't know if you can really tell, but you see, here, I'm gonna stop and try to zoom in a little bit. How his tractor kind of rocks back and forth something with I don't know like not a wheel bearing or anything like that but it's something he wants to get fixed so he can go a little faster otherwise it like really rocks back and forth so maybe I can get him to talk about that later but this is the big 8,000 that he uh, split uh, last year um, and put back together and repainted and all that fun stuff kind of like he's doing with um, that farm all age like these guys started their second crop. Not sure when, if that was just today or if they did it yesterday. I guess I haven't been down this road today. underway so I don't know if you remember from uh, first crop how tall that was we don't have weight here to estimate um, but I can go in here a bit and the grass 
is, you know, up to my shirt, the alfalfa is what's really tall this time. Um, man, look at all that beautiful alfalfa. Like, this is gonna be really nice. Um, oh, it smells so good. The alfalfa is really, really great for your older horses, your younger horses, um, your really thin horses, the ones that need a lot of protein. Um, and they love this stuff. They absolutely gobble it up. Actually, when we give them, you know, most horse people are like, oh no, you don't want alfalfa, all grass, all grass. And you know, they'll get some alfalfa in their bale and then we go to give them a grassy bale and they turn their noses up at it. Like, what is this? Where's my candy? But anyway, so yeah, the alfalfa hadn't come up so much first crop, but the grass had gotten so tall we had to cut. Um, and now this time, well, the alfalfa's kind of beaten the grass a bit. So I think, I don't know if we'll get 161 bales off this field like we did on first crop, but I think we're gonna get quite a few. And Mitch just supervising. I had to turn her so she wasn't in the sun. The AC in this car is being really stupid. Like if, see I have it on hot, if I have it on cold, it blows hot air out over here. Um, but then if I have it on hot, it blows hot air out over here. So it's just off right now. But anyway, so made sure to get her in the shade. Um, what was I gonna say? If you remember from last time, they were talking about how fast he was able to cut this field. I think it was like a half an hour or something like that. And how normally with the old uh, hay vine, it would have taken a lot longer. Um, so I'm timing this one. He started cutting at 1.49. It says 1.59 now, but actually that's, this clock is four minutes fast. So it's been six minutes um, and he's almost done with his second go around. Well, about halfway through a second go around. So we're gonna time it and just see how long it takes. What's really nice with how much this has grown is we have not had much rain at all since we cut, oh, I think it was a week before Memorial Day. So it's been about six weeks and I don't think we've gotten much more than two inches of rain here. Maybe a little more, I could be wrong, but it was looking pretty poor for a while there that we would even get a second crop. Um, and highly unlikely that would have gotten a third if we did. But now here we are, July 1st, um, starting second crop and it's looking good so far. This field, I'm not sure if we've talked about it before, um, belongs to a friend of ours. Uh, that's um, their house right there. Uh, he actually uh, passed away um, two years ago, coming up really soon, July or August, and it's horrible that I don't remember that, but um, he actually built our, our new barn, um, and he was working on another pole barn um, a little ways south of here one day and got struck by lightning. Um, so it was a pretty big shock to everyone. Uh, you'll probably be seeing his son coming up in an upcoming episode. He will be the one uh, putting the lean-tos on the shop in the barn that I mentioned. Um, so yeah, it's really wonderful that his um, widow continues to let us cut this field here. Um, that's definitely what he would have wanted. And uh, we're really appreciative and it's really sad. He was a great guy. Thank you, Rick. Okay, so this says it's 2.22. It is actually 2.18. As I said, this is four minutes fast. Um, he's cleaning up one little area there, and then he'll do his last pass around the outside. Uh, so we'll check back in a couple minutes and see exactly how long this took. All right, 2.24, also known as 2.20. And he's starting the last pass, so I'm gonna head out there and get that and get what time it is when he stops. So 
little section there. I don't remember if we talked about it last time. There's like um, some debris, like big rocks and chunks of concrete, I think, and stuff in there. So instead of trying to cut and bale over it, they just kind of skip that little bit. Um, and then we don't have to do some big excavating, end up with a big hole in the field. And the little bit that is there is not worth all that for, really. Yeah, I remember Rick talked to me one day about the little gas pump he had, and how I was always wanted to get one for Nate for outside his shop, and he was going to look for one for us. That wasn't long before the accident happened, but it's a cool old gas pump there. Okay, my phone says it is 2.23 right now. I'll just go ahead and film and do this last pass around the edge. And we'll check the time when he stops. I'll shoot him next day to get back there. He must have to go back there a smidge. I wonder if he's going to take this down right here. It's a little wide. Sounds like he's shutting it down back there. My phone now says it is 2.27. We started this at 1.49. Uh, oh, he was gonna take this down. We'll go with math. 39 minutes. So I timed it this time. It took 39 minutes. I could have went a gear faster, but why push it when it's working good, right? But <clears throat> I lost a knife towards the end there. I could hear it. I could feel it vibrate. Oh, those but, are the things you just replaced? Yeah, but when I was cutting, I could hear a noise like it, it was just like it was hitting something and I know I said earlier how the new knives were a little bit longer mm -hmm. and I cut them off so it cleared here mm -hmm. but I think with it running in centrifugal force it probably pushes it out threw more. it out because I, I could hear a noise and all of a sudden I didn't hear that noise anymore but I felt the vibration and I, that's when I lost this this knife Yikes. so I'll have to get 
you know, two more of the correct knives for it. But other than that, it sure, sure worked nice. There's a lot of hay out there. I think there might be more there than the first crop. I couldn't. I think so. I don't know. Height wise, I think it's a little bit shorter, but there's a lot more alfalfa. The alfalfa is really thick. Really thick and, and tall. It's really nice. I, I think there'll be at least as much as first. And that was 161 bales, I remember. Yep. So, find out in a few days. It's settled, so I was going to put the transport lock in, but it's already settled enough. I can't put that in, so it'll just drop to the ground. Oh. It doesn't really matter. As long as you're not underneath it. <laughs> That's why you want those transport locks in if you're underneath it doing anything. Or you, when you go down the road, you really should. I mean, we're not going very far here, but if you would happen to blow a hydraulic hose on the road, the machine Boom. would drop down, and then there you'd sit with the machine down. So that's why they're called transport locks. You're always supposed to. Yeah, we just came there. from. That's half mile. Away. That house right there. That's where we were at. Very good neighbors to let us cut and bale their yard. So I was talking about Rick a little bit. It was two years ago. Um. Yeah, it'll be two years this coming August up. When he passed away. August. I couldn't remember if it was July or August. I knew it was pretty yeah. soon. That was, a, that was an awful day. Yeah. And I was saying how uh, his son will actually be the one coming to put up those lean-tos. Right. And yep. So it'll be good to introduce him yep. when he's here. Yep. Good people. Yeah. What are you doing? Go mow our trails. Yeah, I talk about it. I'm going to go mow our trails. What trails? Our trails in the woods for walking the dogs and horse riding too, I guess. Oh, okay. But what is this now? This is a piece of junk. It's our, it's our farm old Bible for. This is Cooks Valley Farm Alley, right? That's what you call it. Yeah. It was the first tractor we bought. <laughs> and it's deep, you know. And it's the one you take the best care of. <laughs> I mean, just look at them tires. Friends can't believe they hold air. I can't either. I've had it for 10 years and I've never had it air for one. This was a 405. That would have been fun, but it's not. It's a 450. The manure spreader is a 514. I don't, yeah, I guess. Anyway, this one's much prettier. This is the one he painted earlier this spring. Let's see what the Farm All H over there looks like when he's done. So here's Garfield. Betty. He was over there on the zero turn. I'm taking a nap. Why don't you, buddy? Hi. So, yeah, Garfield's still around. Still the sweetest boy. You're a good mouser, aren't ya? Yes. Yes, you are. Alright, we gotta go to a 4th of July party, okay? We won't be gone long, I promise. See you up at the house later. So what's going on? Um, we are going down to feed the ones over there. What are you feeding them? Um, grain and weight gain. For the ones that need some weight? Yeah. Perfect.
going to go tent the hay. What did you guys do? Or is this one a big hole in it? Oh yeah, it's got a oh no, that's that's the opening. <laughs> Leah. The birds are looking Hey, no nipping. Yep. He loves you! It's warm! <laughs> I have to take one thing off. What's that? It's a battery tray they had. And it's not the right one, so I got the right one coming. Time to paint. You can paint. You paint. You gonna tell me why I missed the spot? I'm not sure I'll be able to see. slow process. You're just going to paint over all that grease? That's pretty much covered up by the grill. Oh. This isn't a show tractor, it's a working tractor. Oh. If it was a show tractor, I'd have sandblasted it all and taken it all apart. Not going to happen. Tighten that up yet? Forgot about that. I still can. So why do you turn it on and off? Stop and start, stop and, you know? Oh, the trigger. If you just pull that, it just puts the air out paint. It's like a two-stage thing. No, that doesn't answer my question. Oh. You know, most people, they take a spray can and just <laughs> constant spray. Mm -hmm. I'll come, like, do a little bit. Play with them. Oh, if you, when you come to the end of your stroke, you quit spraying. And then you're always moving the gun when you, if you, uh, Stop and move again, you'll have a run. And how do you know this stuff? Well, my dad had a body shop from the time I was a little kid, so I worked there since I was like six. So, so you painted cars? I painted cars, bought some. Is this more fun? This is way more fun because it's mine, and if it isn't perfect, nobody cares but me. <laughs> or if somebody cares, I don't. <laughs> Arlen's here to critique. And help drink beer, I suspect. Well, 
It is a work. holiday weekend. When we're done painting, we can drink beer and see all the spots I miss. Covered by the hood, so you don't see it. No, like right here. Oh. Okay. What I miss? <laughs> Are the floorboards? Dude, down there, down there. Hard to get at some of this stuff. We so made this it. is where if somebody else doesn't like it, you don't care because. <laughs> that, that way nobody will ask me to paint their tractor. Yeah, they will do it anyway. How much paint you got left? Not a lot. Not a lot. Not a lot. Not really, because I'm about out of paint. Oh. I noticed that. Good thing there's two. Yeah. Take the air out of this place. Wow, the wheel is what started this whole thing, right? Yeah, yeah flat tire. According to the one comment, it's like ultimate nerd. Did you see that one? Yeah, what did it say? <laughs> like, that's ultimate nerd. You gotta replace the flat tire, so you decide to take it all apart and just paint it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Always been a nerd. So in the body shop, the worst thing of painting is always cleaning up the paint gun. So now we have this paint gun. Am I gonna get sprayed? I hope not. The paint gun part is disposable. Oh, so you don't have to clean it? Yeah. Do that. I don't think that's environmentally friendly. Probably not. And then the cup is lined. Look at that. There. Cleanup is done. Oh, you were mentioning the radiator cap, and he said every farm all he's had with that style of radiator cap, it's always been a good tractor. Whatever that's worth. So this morning, Doug is here uh, moving the dirt around, gravel and stuff around that new apron they poured and put that rock in. Nate is back in the trailer up over here to put the tin from his tractor that is going to go uh, to get sandblasted before he paints it. Um, the guy is in Kadat and it just so happens we have to go pick up a horse in Kadat. So we're going to load it up here in the trailer, drop the tin off and then pick up a medium pony, we are told. So we're gonna take the scrap to its new forever home. <laughs> no, because it's not scrap. We're gonna take the parts to their temporary foster home. <laughs> So dang noisy. Noisy, noisy, noisy. Too late. I'm gonna call my heart scrap. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Look at how excited you are walking with your stuff. Well, he got the rest of it painted yesterday. I saw his uh, picture. Oh, yeah. We all just stand around. Nobody else here to help, Nate. Sorry. Here in there. She's actually going to check the oil prior to us leaving this time. Oh, that's a good thing. It, it 
it's a good thing. The last two times I've almost arrived at my place and I've gotten a phone call. I forgot to check the oil before you left. Oh. It burns oil. One of them was our longest one. Yeah. Milwaukee. on our way to pick up an owner's surrender by the name of Buddy. His owner had bought him as a pasture companion for the horses that he had. Um, since then, the horses have been sold and Buddy was left all alone. The owner is now moving and cannot take Buddy with, so he asked us to take him in and see if we can help find him another home. We are back at the rescue. We're gonna get Buddy into a stall here and let him settle in. Polly is here today to trim some horses. He had a pretty rough day yesterday trimming elsewhere, so he is pretty sore, and we're hoping today goes a little bit better for him. I'm gonna start on that one. Start on the other side? Yeah. Quit. I stand. Come on, you know what you've had done. I guarantee you've been trimmed before. It doesn't look as bad as I thought it. No, I mean, that ain't a whole lot for heel. I mean, that's the heel. We just need, we're just missing this whole, you know, basically a whole quarter of a hoof wall. I mean, I think that's why everything is shifted, because she's compensating and walking like this. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm gonna trim it, see what she stands like, I guess. Or what she, what she looks like after it's trimmed. But you need to stand, Missy, because my back is out. No, we ain't gonna start that habit. Yeah, I gotta do everything from scratch on her. But I've gotta be careful too, because the whole hoof is shifted. You know? So I don't know what's grown where. Okay, now stand square. So you can see with having nothing. On this inside wall, everything has shifted. I mean, you can even see, you know, the growth ring's got a, yeah. everything has, so which has caused all that internal structure to shift over, but down. So she might have 
a half inch of sole to play with here more than you normally would. But here, I mean, it's right there. Do you think it's fixable with just... Um... Yeah. How old is she? 16. Okay. Yeah, it's fixable, but it would take time and... If she was to go to someone, you know, if someone's to adopt her, I would recommend every four weeks in front shoes. That way the shoe can offer as almost a barrier to let some of this wall grow out. It's gonna grow way slower than normal because it's like scar tissue. And it's not gonna grow like a nice foot, so whoever the farrier is is gonna have to re, you know, work, reshape that each time to, to teach that how to grow and keep it uniform and then keep the shoe more or less not for traction or anything, but keep it as a more or less a cast to teach the hoof how to grow again. And it'd probably offer some nice support here too. So she's not walking so because I'm sure these I'm sure these tendons and everything is sore here. Right. Can I have my hand back? I would almost, whoever does, you know, I would almost recommend bar shoes. Because if you put a normal shoe on, she's going to just bend that inside up. Because there's nothing to, at least with the bar shoe, you got full support. And whatever, I mean, for shoes, in theory that would help this grow out and give her more support so she's not walking so pushing everything out. At least a shoe... The shoe would do more or less trying to help her foot grow normal than. You don't think we should put the shoe on her now? We can if you want. I gotta see what I got for bar shoes. Otherwise, we gotta take a normal shoe and turn it backwards. Yeah, let's see what you got. I would only adopt her to someone that has a farrier that can do corrective shoeing. And to some people, that's really bad to say because you gotta know how to do corrective trimming before you can do corrective shoeing. Um, but with this one, I mean, it's going to go hand in hand. you got to know how to balance a hoof like that to put a shoe on it anyway. So any... This isn't a horse for someone that just graduated farrier school or you're not going to take it to Amos Yoder. They're pretty chipped up. I don't want to rasp anymore because he's got it past the white line. But his frogs are growing. His heels are balanced. You might want to just maybe each time just... Keep shaping his backs because he's got them so chipped up. Does he pick his feet up? I, mean, I guess I'd assume so. I guess that answers that. This is where. Look at his outside bulbs. See his feet? Yep. What do you notice? That one right there is in the front right. Has like it looks as if he's weighing it to the right far so, too much. And this left one, I'm not even too certain how to feel about that at all. It so, look right in the back left at all. What, had, what it is, is how he's standing, is that outside heel. They took mm -hmm. it all the way to the frog. The, okay. outside he, or the inside heel is where it should be. So yeah. basically, he's walking it almost looks like, like this. Yeah. Yeah. Like this and that. So, a horse like this, then you, you have to restart, take all this heel. Okay. And that's the last thing you always want to do because you want to leave a horse with a nice 52 to a 54 degree angle, ideally. Right. Sometimes you cannot achieve that, but you get as close as you can. Mm -hmm. But being whoever trimmed him, or it could be how he walks, but I mean, it didn't look like he had trimmed too long ago. And I'll show you why. So on a horse like this, we got to get him rebalanced because okay. otherwise he's going to, when he's like this, he's going to mm -hmm. keep growing in, in, in. And you get these horses that are like paddle footed. Yep. So like down south, like those Missouri Fox Trotters or those Tennessee Walkers, even them Kentucky saddle horses, mm -hmm. they purposely do that to a horse because they claim 
they can climb better. Okay. How do you walk on a hill? You walk sideways. Yeah, yeah. So now are we gonna take a lot of that outer heel off, so to say? Or in that outer There is no outer heel left. They took it all the way down. We gotta we gotta take all the inside heel to straighten them back out. Okay. And then in time you gotta leave his heel. So it, you're starting from scratch. Mm -hmm. You gotta take all of his heel, bring his toe back each time and just keep you take that rasp and you go two swipes, just enough to rebalance it, and then you gotta re angle it each time. Okay because someone didn't know what they were doing. When I pick this up. Okay. See how that's all the way down? Mm -hmm. And that's higher? Yep. That's gonna shift everything that way. Right. And, I mean, you can, six months you can have a horse's foot just trashed from that. Just, I mean. And then when you trim them all the way back and reshape them again, they're gonna be sore for two, three weeks because everything, and here mm -hmm. has got to readjust all it's of a sudden. Completely yeah, because this yep. shifts They've over time. It's like putting braces on. Yep. If you put it on and just tighten it right away, it ain't going to feel good. Mm -hmm. It's like when you trim a horse back, then yeah, he's going to be sore. Yeah. <laughs> You're still there. <laughs> I'm gonna see that angle quick. Okay, so I'll move out of the way and I'll let you hold the foot. Sounds good. But what you're looking for yep. is when you see this and you line it up here, mm -hmm. and you're gonna see how much higher that is. This heel bulb is compared to. That. Well, you're gonna see how much higher this heel is. I mean, you're looking at quarter inch. Okay. I mean, I think you can even see it from there. If you want to take a look, take a look quick, then I'm gonna trim him up and. And it doesn't help because he's such a big horse. Oh yeah. So you're gonna line significant difference. So you're gonna line you're gonna line this into that. Yep. And then when you have that lined up, because that's your lowest point, and then you'll see how much higher your other heel is. I got you. Okay, bud, come on. You just want to rasp it. Hey. Maybe that's why that one's trimmed and that one ain't. No, I gotta... I gotta think. <laughs> What's the issue? There's nothing there, though. No, I just gotta... Think? <laughs> yeah. Come on. Yep, bring it up. Get real nice and drunk. Yeah, that's how it lines up. I hate corrective shoeing. She just always looks like dog crap. Don't pull. Come on. <gasps> oh!
sit still for a little bit. Oh. Just hang on and hug her, not the wall. Well, you know what? I'm trying to do you a damn favor. Don't let that rope go, Trevor. Get out of there. This is number two. <laughs> um, of 20. Technically three, because we did one in between. Uh, so. Fair enough. Can you cooperate? My mood will improve through the day. <laughs> I know it will. I definitely didn't think these two were gonna be like this. Well, whoever trimmed this horse didn't know what they were doing, for one. Because his front feet are all... I mean, you guys seen his outside heel is completely cut down, and his inside heel is about a quarter inch higher, and then he's just... Everything's growing at an angle forward, and then he turned into a paddle-footed horse, and he's too big of a horse to have any sort of foot issues, because he's got, yeah, he's just, beefy. Yeah, he's beefy. Sorry, you got thrush like a son of a gun too, don't you, buddy? Yeah, you do. If I can smell it, I know it's bad. I can smell it. Does he need a washing while he's sedated? Is it nasty? Well, it ain't pretty. Well, it ain't gonna be me. If you guys get a pail of warm water and soap and a glove, I'll wash it. I, I, I mean, he's just got like... <laughs> you should see Shady's. <laughs> yeah. That one's really... Yeah, go ahead, clean that one. Yeah. He'd rearrange my face. <laughs> so... Let's get him clean and then we'll... bastard. You wanna try the bad back foot first since that one's long? Trevor? Can you get me the stand prayer prayer maybe? If at all possible. He's just too big to lean on me and I'm too damn sore. Oh, <laughs> back this hind left, there's nothing to take off from this one being that much longer. He's got it wore down to nothing. All right, time for your bath. Yeah, yeah, you're fine. Just... This guy's supposed to have, to supposed, yeah, supposed to be in a big camera. Is this? Phantomous. Oh. Okay. Alright. Yeah. You were good last time. Okay, come on, buddy. No, you're good. I'll get you fixed up, okay? Didn't I trim him like a month ago? Mm. Or has it been longer? I guess it's... 
Come on, bud. Just... The day he showed up. Yeah, the day. Here, actually take that back. But anyway. I see that. Do you pick your feet up? <laughs> was she just trimmed recently by someone? I think they said she was recently trimmed. By who? I don't know. They said something about her heels though. They were saying like that something stuff. about they were leaving the mm -hmm. lawn because she was so flat and she was so they were trying to like grow so it like helped her I don't know come off the ground. It know. didn't make sense, which is why I'm not entirely sure what they were trying to say. Not found her, but she's borderline. The lamina is very stretched. Like what was, what was going to found her. Trim some, of, trim some of the soul back then. Trim some of the soul back. Leaving them long is only going to make them flatter and worse. I think she said such poor trimming for such a long time. Her toes so messed up. Just keep trimming her. Just keep bringing it back.
the time, okay? You got nice feet, though. It's big. Don't you dare bite me. Is that the one you wanted? <laughs> Get a percher on. It's like riding a sofa. What? I'm four foot eleven rider. I gotta read on something. I'm a legal hobbit. Look at his all cooker kettle like Sandy. He's worse. He's bad. Oh boy. Yeah, he's got nothing over here. Even his, right here, has shifted his bulbs. Mm -hmm. So that's more of like a, this had to have happened right away, or he was born with it. I mean, we could take this high side down, but, I mean, it won't do nothing because it's going to grow back the same way. I'll take it down a little bit in chapters because I don't know what's going to be where. Vibration, bud. Yeah, it had to have been more of a birth defect because it's not a. Because his white line and his lamina comes to a point. It's not like there's a, a ripple in it where it would have been an injury. Well, if he was from the Amish, I mean, his dad is probably his brother. Yeah, I mean, it's it's more than even his foot, like his whole. Yeah. On his front feet, he's probably got some of the best angles I've ever seen on a standard bread. <laughs> So like his front feet look great. It's like some of the best angles I've seen on a standard bread. Because usually they have no heel and he's got really nice angles. But his back feet is... So his left hind is so club-footed. Being that's such a genetic issue, I mean, there's nothing you can really do besides maintain it. But being his right hind is so bad, that outside wall is you'll never have to trim it. Because of how everything is so cosmetic. Genetic wise, you can't really fix that and then everything's gonna push to the inside and the only way to keep him going You'd never have to trim the outside, but you'd have to probably rebalance his heel from the inside that inside heel almost every 10 days because everything's shifting Maybe over time being as young you could get it to straighten out, but just by judging how everything is You know From the hip down and the bone structure. I don't think that's foreseeable Especially as his bones get, you know, more a little more dense and he adds weight. Especially when he adds weight, that's really going to make it worse. Come here, honey. Let me take a gander at it. She been getting around better since, or? She was running. Fair enough. Right, that'll take some time to build. And that actually don't look too bad. I mean, that's pretty flush. I think she, she'll be just fine, I think. It'll just the take... Her feet look good. She's just going to need to take time to build that muscle back up. Because she's, cause she's been walking so stupid so long. Want to walk around a little bit, Lexi?
Yep. I do wonder if there isn't something in hip, but it looks like she's getting a little more muscle. Since the last time I seen her, I think there is. Yeah. I mean. Um, Rosa, or do we know who it is? That's a lot of foot. <laughs> come on. No, come on now. Don't get stupid because you're... Come on. I'm thirsty. <laughs> Just done. I'm done. Too. Yeah. <laughs> we all know that's not going to be for a while. So. Got her. No, we don't got her yet. Well, this was what we wanted to do. Espresso was the horse at the auction that everybody was warning us was pinning their ears and biting and threatening to strike and kick at people. So even once Polly got the rope on her and we got her caught, we were not sure how she was going to behave. As it turns out, uh, she was very respectful and actually very good for her feet. Don't say that yet. Ah. Yep, not my problem. Kick it out, get it out of you. Get it out of you. You don't kick me in the knee. Get over it. Get it out of you. I've had enough of your shit. You're gonna hurt someone. <laughs> had enough? Nope. <laughs> Don't look at me like that. I have no sympathy for you right now. Bite me, and it won't go well.
Yep. Well, that's the one I wanted anyways. That buckle's gonna hurt if it comes. Don't kick a hole in the tank. The tank probably costs more than you do. up, we're going to bring them up to the new barn and get them into our training routine as soon as possible. 